growing up, I only knew 10 relatives. I only knew 10 of my relatives. And now I know over 500 relatives. And last year, I had a get together for the entire Angela bloodline that migrated uh, from Eswatini. But they just didn't migrate from Eswatini. They also, some of them came from KZN. You know, because there was no one migration, it wasn't a one way, uh, you know, a, 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 a one way migration. The others came um, uh, before Queen Yamazana. You know, the other ones came with Queen Yamazana. The other ones came with Mzilikazi. The other ones came with their own. So you find there's a lot of Swati uh, people in uh, in Zimbabwe. Not just Swati. There's also the Nchangas. My grandmother, my mother's mother was in Changas. There is an entire uh, clan of Nchangasi people right in the middle of Zimbabwe. Some of them actually have kingdoms there. The Shachwa is from the Swaziland, the Gure Kingdom in Zimbabwe. They would land, you know, and they've been living there for a very, a very long time. Even when you, one of the programs that I'm doing is um, uh, I am uh, I'm studying um, the African dialects or the battle dialects that we've got and removing all the colonial influences and the bastardization and the acculturation. Karanga, Swati, Nyanja, Beba, most of our dialects are the same when you remove the influences. You can actually trace that, oh, this is a Arabic influence. Oh, this is English uh, influence. Uh, this happened when we intermarried with such a clan, this is uh, maybe evolution because over time, because of migrations, uh, language evolves into dialects as, as well. But it's something that you can actually trace that at one point we spoke the same language. And this language is already, we are already speaking it, but in different dialects that have evolved um, over time because of imperialism, because of colonization, because of uh, intermarriages because of acculturation, because of uh, bastardization. And I became aware of this the first time I studied the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Mm -hmm. When you study the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it makes more sense in Bantu dialects than in whatever they call Egyptology. Yes, because uh, Egyptians, by their own self-confession and that, from those papyrus of Nefa, the papyrus of Ali, to where they talking about their their origins, you know. Uh, some they come from Anu, or they are the Anu, like their self, their very self, ethnic definition is the Anu. Mm -hmm. And and but also it shows you that they come from the heartland of the Bokongo land, you know, the heartland of Bokongo, like the, the beginning of the Nile you find it in, in the Congo, in Lualaba, you know, Lualaba River. It's actually the source where the, the Nile come from. And, and it's like the Winsuel Mountains. It's like the confluence of Uganda, Rwanda, Congo, all those areas there. And, and that is in the heartland of the Bantu uh, people and their land. So it's, it's very quite interesting to make those connections. And you find the oneness, the cultural oneness that uh, exists. Uh, and and it, it is actually true when you're saying that um, it is in using Bandu dialects that one really get to understand the Egyptian book of the day, to find the similarities. Um, the places they talk about, in Kanga, you know, in the, the field of reeds, you know. Uh, Tulayamo, yeah, you know, Taneta, the land of the spirit land, the ancestral land, and all of these words you find them in, in Bantu dialects, in Bantu languages, in Bantu stories of origin, what they call Bantu mythology. Uh, you get a whole lot of similarities that with any of these nations today we are trying to claim Egypt, than with the Arabs, than with the Europeans. And it, 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 makes, it makes more sense, you know. Uh, what Egyptology studies is history. For us, it's current affairs. Mm. The ceremonies that are written in the Egyptian Book of the Dead are the ceremonies that we are having almost every week. 
the way they were brewing beer thousands of years ago in Egypt is the same way that we are brewing beer today. And we are using the same grain. So can you say that? Yeah. And it's, it's current affairs to us. It's not, it's it's not, not, it's not ancient history. history. It's not ancient history. You know, so it's a living history. Mm. So I hope, you know, I know there is an awareness, you know, people are becoming aware, but also because of social media, you know, because of internet, uh, we also have access to useless and false information, you know, and uh, so we must be mindful and uh, be conscious and be true to ourselves, you know, on this journey. And I think one of the first things that we need to, to, learn and understand and embrace is that we are the same people. That is, that is the most uh, important message of the day, is that we are the same people. Yeah. We, we have a common origin. We have a common ancestor, like you said, that at one time we had only two ancestors. Mm -hmm. So basically that is what most of our stories of origin are fair. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, there is a there is a bloodline called the Moyo Moyo people in uh, in Zimbabwe. So after the decline of Great Zimbabwe, uh, uh, a leader called Mukwati uh, went and settled in what is now Matepele in Zimbabwe, and then another leader called Mutota settled in what is now called Dande, and then uh, the other leader settled. In what is called Mozambique now, we started Chimoyo. Chimoyo. So Chimoyo is uh, the Portuguese uh, 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 spelling of Chimoyo is not the original spelling. The original spelling is in Kara. You know, it's Chimoyo, Moyo meaning heart. Uh, so um, after the decline of, uh, of Great Zimbabwe, you know, people went into different directions. The Tembe went and settled in. Uh, Mozambique and then the other bloodlines came and settled in, uh, in, South, in South Africa. The same way they moved from Apongupe to Great Zimbabwe is the same way they moved from Great Zimbabwe back to, to, to what is now uh, South Africa. So when you ask the Moyo people, the Duma people, where, where they come from, they say in Mozambique. Because they've forgotten that they, they were actually retained. <coughs> it was their second migration. Yes, it was their, their second migration. And um, so what I've noted, um, a lot of times when people argue and then start saying, you are not from here, you are not from here, you are not from here, it's mostly uh, out of ignorance. Because when we were migrating, a lot was happening. You know, we were migrating because of lifestyle, we were migrating because of war, we were migrating because of drought, you know, we were migrating because of growth. And sometimes we took over land that belonged to, you know, to others, you know. And the people that we take over land from, they've got maybe relatives who migrated somewhere. And then when those relatives come back, you see them as, you know, as, uh, as intruders and you're forgetting that the land that you're sitting on belongs to the relatives of those people before they, before they, mig they migrated. A lot of land that we've got uh, today, today, you find out most people haven't been on that land for more than 300 years. You know, there were people who were there before. And their relatives, you know, when they are migrating, they are migrating back to where, you know, their ancestors told them, we came from this land, we came from this land, we came from this land. Uh, I always give the, the example of Zulikaz, you know, when he was going to Zimbabwe, he was probably going to a land where he heard that his ancestors had once lived. You know, when Sushangane went and created the Gaza Empire, his relatives were already there, the Ziva, the, the Ziva people, the water, the, the, the ones who told them is the water element. Uh, and they've always been called Numalo and uh, Sizima, you know, and they've always been there. So he wasn't, during uh, Mifika, he wasn't uh, uh, running to a place that he had a head of. He was running to a place that he knew. That he knew, and his relatives were. Who were they? But if you don't, if you are ignorant of history now, you see him as an intruder. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. But whatever was happening back then with our ancestors, I mean, it was happening then. That's that was the in thing. It's it's like with the the overall bantu migrations in, in, in Africa. 
mostly even Western historians, when they present the boundary migration, they present it like it's a single migration. True. Yeah. But but it's multiple migrations. They back, and forth, back and forth, back and forth. For for years. That is why today there are contradictions even in anthropology. Some people are talking about the, the eastern cradle and now they are talking about the southern cradle. Mm -hmm. The Daun child is some 1.9 million years old for mm -hmm. fossils. And so well, those some of them we know that um, uh, 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 cradles of monkey kind than mankind kind because mm -hmm. they always come up with these monkey-like characters. Mm -hmm. But also you have where they trace the human as we know them and their human culture and uh, the things they were using, their utensils, their beer, their clay pot, their, their rites of passage. passage. Their rites of passage. Mm -hmm. They did back to 300,000 years ago, be below this Limpopo River, be in this southern area, mm -hmm. southern region. So it's not only a result of one singular migration that we came from the north and then we came here. But it's something that we've been doing. And some is seasonal. Mm -hmm. Some is being caused by other type of uh, reasons, like like plagues, calamit calamities, mm -hmm. when there is um, a, a lack of grazing land, or you know, a couple of factors mm -hmm. affected the to and fro movement. But it was never just a singular factor that okay, when the Arabs invaded um, North Africa and then the rest of the Africans ran from Kemet and everyone. We just came from like once, like once and, and once off movement, and then we found the Khoisan here, and then we exterminate them mm -hmm. or we remove them as the, the Boas and the Afri Forum. We like to project it, you know. <clears throat> but we are dealing with people who are into the single story, a uh, single pattern of events that they need to narrate in order to justify their colonization, their conquest. Uh, of us and, and, and our lands. So it is always important to revisit this part of this complex part of our history and simplify it because it is complex for us. If you're talking about multiple migrations, you're talking about complexities. If you're talking about um, uh, uh, feminists and the movement of the lands and how people went into.